Hello everyone, welcome back to Mind Pump. Do you want to build more muscle? Well, the answer may be to do less or maybe even nothing at all, believe it or not. The muscle growth in the deload week is significantly higher than it is on the hard weeks. There's the right amount that'll give you the best results, and then there's the most you could tolerate. And they're two different amounts. Later, we talk about the hidden poisons in our foods and the negative effects that they can have on our health. In the second half of the show, we coach four live callers on questions like, I want to enter a powerlifting competition. How should I prepare? And also, my lower body is developing faster than my upper body. What should I do? Finally, do you enjoy these shows where we coach live callers on their fitness and health questions? Well, we have these calls all separated out for you in individual clips over at our other channel, Mind Pump Clips, right here on YouTube. Go over there and subscribe. All right, enjoy the show. One of the best muscle building hacks for fitness fanatics is the following. Take some time off. Mm. This one is the lesson I continue. I was just going to say, I feel like this, to is, learn <laughs> this is over. you, this Actually, is you <laughs> talking to yourself hey, right now. I feel should like. I use the word learn or should I use the word Daily like, affirmation? Yeah, I don't know if you really learned your lesson. If Never. You're if you're still talking Never. about it. You know, it's funny about this. So it's okay. Look, the data is clear on this. Uh, when they have, when they show deload weeks. So you guys know how, like people will program a deload week. So you work out for six weeks hard. Then you have your deload week where you go in at like, you know, 40% intensity or whatever. The muscle growth in the deload week is significantly higher than it is on the hard weeks. Okay, that's what they show in studies. Then there's studies that show, there's that one that we've quoted many times, Adam, where- Yeah, one that, and seventh. Yeah, right. they had, we had those two, no, no, it's the other one where they had two oh, groups oh, yeah. of people and one group worked out three weeks straight, took a week off. Three weeks straight, took a week off. The other group worked out every single week. Right. At the end of the study, the results were the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which is kind of crazy because a lot of weeks, that's one week off every right. fourth week is off. Right. So, um, and then reading about old school bodybuilders, old school bodybuilders would often take a whole month off a year. Mm. Well, I also think that what I would add to studies that I think of value to your point you're making right now is the other study, which I originally thought you were alluding oh, to, yeah. which is the one in, you only need one seventh the volume to make. I think it might even have been one ninth. No, it's one seventh. Was it? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one I heard you quote one ninth the other day and I was going to correct you, but it's okay. like, whatever. It's a lot. It's but, a lot. It's like yeah, way it's like, less. Like, yeah, it's way less you got to do to maintain than, than what it took to actually get there. So the combination of all those studies together says to mm. me that- you know, uh, there's there's tremendous va value, especially for advanced lifters, right? So this this, this conversation, is not, yeah, this yeah, conversation is more appropriate for your your ultimately consistent yes. fanboy of fitness, yeah. Right? yeah. Not not necessarily your everyday average person that that struggles to get there. Yeah, this is not for John who can't string together two or three days a week. Yeah, uh, this is for and you know you know I'm talking to. John. I feel like John's consistent. I think it's Susan who's really inconsistent. Yeah, Susan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you guys <laughs> shaming <laughs> Susan. You get what I mean? It's it's this this is for for the person who's very consistent week in and week out. Yeah. So I'll give you guys a personal story. Uh, and this, there's always something that reminds me of this every year or two. And I always fail to really learn this because it's so hard to judge. Okay. It's so hard to judge primarily because there's the right, we've said this so many times, right? There's the right amount that'll give you the best results. And then there's the most you could tolerate. And they're two different amounts. And I have a tendency, I think like everybody or most people who are very consistent, we have a tendency to, to push towards what we can tolerate. Because we do the right amount, we get good results, and then the volume somehow goes up. And now here's where I got mixed up this time. So um, I, I think I've been on TRT now for over a year and a half, right? Has it been a year and a half now? It's been that long? Or maybe a year. Maybe, maybe, maybe a year. year maybe a year. A year, because it was, yeah, because it was right when we started with Regenerative. Right. So I was, so I was, year. I was down my, my testosterone was probably out of range or low now looking back at symptoms for at least a few years. So I was dealing with that. Then I, I bring my testosterone, you know, through medic medication up to the upper limit of what is considered normal. Right. So there's a big difference in terms of how I feel way more energy, blah, blah, blah. So I'm working out and I'm just getting stronger right? Because now I have adequate testosterone. And as I'm getting stronger, I'm doing more workload. I'm working out more in the gym. But here's the problem. Getting stronger, meaning you lift more weights, that also adds volume to your total work. 
In other words, 10 sets of squats at five reps with 300 pounds is more volume than 10 sets of squats for five reps with 200 pounds. We tend to think, and this is the mistake I fall for, sets and reps, but I keep forgetting the load. Like I'm lifting more weight just because I feel much stronger. So I'm looking at my workouts and I'm like, well, the volume isn't that much more, so it should be okay. But the reality is my volume was higher because I'm stronger. Anyway, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, we. I know I do this. I tend to judge um, my volume by, well, I can do it. I seem to be pretty recovered. I don't have injuries. So I think I'm doing pretty well, but I'm not necessarily counting all the factors because I don't track and all that other stuff. So recently I hurt my wrist. You guys know this. I don't know what I did to it. I had to take uh, about three days off from working out. Lo and behold, uh, I get, I work out again and I go light because my wrist is still hurting and I'm like strong. I'm getting crazy pumps. I feel good. I look at Adam. I'm like, of course I had to take some time off. Yeah. You know, I kind of got forced. Yeah. So I think it would be wise and this is now where I think the intuitive part of training may be there's, this is a, a challenge for a lot of people. I think if you're really consistent, you probably should schedule yeah. a week off every six to eight weeks. Well, because what a, I don't think you'll do it by feel. What I know a, I won't. What a no. hard, hard dance though, right? Like yeah, most people, and I would, I would even include myself in this category is, is always working towards being consistent and that's that's a consistent battle and struggle yeah. with with life, and so you, you finally get consistent and to think that, and then you're like take time off. Yeah, you know. So <laughs> I, it's it's such. A, I, I think more importantly than the taking time off, I think would be just to to really deload, to really reduce the amount of volume that you're doing. And I, I mean, I think Maps 15 is a perfect way to do that. I think that, and part of why I thought I or why I think I saw saw, saw such great results of reducing on that is because I had been training consistently pretty well and I was strong. And so I was able to do two exercises lift with decent amount of weight. So I was able to maintain a decent amount of volume still to hang on to muscle mass, but then also reduce it enough that I wasn't feeling like the, the joint pain or inflammation going on. I felt really good going in each workout. It's just, it's interesting because it's, um, it's, it's less than you think. Usually, right? If you're super consistent fanatic with exercise, it's less volume, less intensity, less everything than you think you need. And we tend to push it because I like the mental effects. I like the workout itself. So I know I'm always going to trend towards doing more and more and more. So my, I guess my, my argument is it's probably wise to schedule it. So you mm -hmm. said schedule like a, a deload week. Sure. But I think what you should do is put it in your calendar and not wait till you think you need, you know, like, oh, I feel like I need a time off. Because yeah. that can be hard to judge. I'm not, I mean, I think I'm pretty good at it, but I'm really not as good as I think I am. Yeah, you know no, I don't mean? think you're that good at it. Yeah. I think you're, <laughs> I, I mean, I think you're, at, if, out of the four of us, I think you would be the most borderline uh, addicted to training the, out of all of us. So you're you're the most likely to do that. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you say that? I mean, yeah, that's, I'm, that's, I'm that's, most, that's I'm a most, double, that's a double-edged sword, right? I mean, it's, it's sure. a positive sign. It's also what makes you amazing and consistent and disciplined sure. and stay the, relatively in the best shape year round. But it also means that you're more likely to lean on that than the, the other direction. Yeah. Yeah. But also think of it this way, like, um, even for you, right? You're, it, it's hard to judge just because of your history and how, how fit you've been in the past. It's, it's almost like it probably would be wise to schedule in your workout plan, okay, if I stay this consistent, then I'll make sure this week is one of these weeks. Right? Yeah. You know I, mean, I mean, so I like, I mean, I like the idea of that, but again, going back to my original point is I think that, you know, like if I said, okay, November, the week of November 20th, I'm going to take that week off. That's my plan. Um, okay. Well, if all things work out perfect from mean. now till then, yeah, that's I'm I mean. really consistent that then that makes a lot of sense. But the reality is my life doesn't tend to happen that way. It, you know, I'll, so I get a cold and then I, I cut back or I get busy or something happens. And so then so I naturally they're all so naturally that ends yeah. up happening. Right. So I, I think for me, the biggest lesson is just realizing that as I've gotten older, as I've gotten stronger, as I've also learned to have more effective sets, I just need less. Yeah. Think about that too. You guys have been, we've all been lifting for over 20 years uh, think about how effective your three sets of squats is today versus what it was, say, 10, 15 years that's, ago. That's exactly right. And so why is this – the reason why this is such an interesting conversation is because as you become more advanced and you're more consistent, you tend to think you need more, 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 more. Right. 
Whereas you probably it's the opposite need less because well, that's a great reason. Yeah. Like three sets of a of, of a squat with someone who's got ten years of experience squatting, they're going to make those three sets extremely effective just naturally. Mm -hmm. You're not even sitting there trying necessarily. Right. You just make them real good. Plus the load, lifting more weight because you're stronger. Well, that adds to the the volume. Oh yeah. So all of that, you know, and, and I know like those of us who are consistent, we, we tend to do more than is necessary. And if you add that up over weeks, months, you know, years, um, well that then, then taking time off makes a big, I, I took three days off, just three days. And you know what, you know what uh, also was that conversation we had with Mike Matthews, where he said he, he was suffering from insomnia for like a year mm -hmm. and couldn't figure out what the hell it was. Okay. Blue light exposure, eating before bed, like he did everything, didn't work. And he's like, maybe I need to reduce the volume of my training. He cut his volume up down by a quarter. Boom. He got good sleep all of a sudden. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just one of those things to pay attention to. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't, I'm definitely not immune to it. Yeah. You know, kind of crazy. Hey, would you like free access to Maps Anabolic? Do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If we like your comment, if we pick your comment, you win Maps Anabolic for free, and we'll notify you in the comment section. There's no other way we'll notify you. So there's some shucksters out there. Don't believe them. Only in the comment section we'll let you know if you won Maps Anabolic. Also, three days left for the October sale. Maps Symmetry, 50% off. Maps Strong, 50% off. If you want to take advantage before the sale ends, click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. Speaking of uh, health and immunity, Two interesting studies I saw in um, Science Daily. ScienceDaily.com, great website where you can go. You can find new studies that are published, and you can kind of break them down, see if they're relevant or not. So there's two of them. One of them shows that a commonly used pesticide has now been connected to uh, kidney dysfunction. Oh, God. A 25% increase in kidney dysfunction. Okay. Wow. And then there was another one. This is a glyphosate study. So glyphosates are this popular class of uh, herbicides. So Roundup is a famous glyphosate. Um, GMO foods are largely designed to be able to handle glyphosates. So genetically modified corn, for example, you could spray the shit out of it with glyphosates. And the corn has been genetically modified to not die from the herbicide, but all the surrounding weeds and stuff do die. So this is how... Do you know the mechanism when the insect eats it, like how they die? It's like a poison basically, but like, is it, uh, like how does it uh, disrupt everything? So herbicides kill plants. Yeah. There are, there are, um, I don't know if they're on the market yet, but there are modified plants that produce their own pesticides. Yeah. Which is something different. Yeah, something different. That's something different. Which and are, are, are we at all slightly worried that we're also pushing this agenda <laughs> to eat bugs as a protein source and this is what fucking eats glyphosates all the yeah, time? Yeah, I, I know, right? Like, have we not <laughs> thought about all this? <laughs> is that even, has that been discussed at all? Uh, is that, or is yeah. that is, no one yeah, thinks we, about we that? We consume the bugs. We consume the vegetables and the plants and all this stuff that's getting sprayed to... I to hell. I love it. I don't anyway, know which continue. one of you I don't know which one of you brought up the conspiracy theory about why the aliens looked away, but I I think that's the best conspiracy theory I've heard you guys say yet. That they said I don't know who said that first. That they're humans from the future? Yes. You know, because it, it looks like they have no genitalia, you know. That oh, big, yeah. Yeah, and that's them kind of come back. If to, you were to, like, put a simulation of, like, evolution, like, going f into, like, thousands of years from now. Yeah. Like, and you just, like, would see, like, there's, like, the genitalia gets smaller. So, because already they're, they're showing that, like, the distance from, you know, your your butt and your uh, and your balls basically uh, is, is the shrunk. Bunch. So, the yeah, bunch. the, 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 the tape's bunch is really shrinking. small. It's shrinking. Yeah. So what does that mean? I mean, the, uh, they think it's it's environmental, yeah. uh, uh, like estrogens, xenoestrogens. So the boys are getting their basic because testosterone levels are dropping. Is our, is our, That's one of the theories. Is our is our for the most part is our business the same or is it shrinking or getting? I think it affects the reproduction. It'll probably be shrinking. Pro well, is is so it though? Old, so old guys are gonna be are gonna have the be packing the most heat is what it looks like. <laughs> 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 so some young dude Our value you. keeps going there's up. some perks doug see hey. there's some there's some perks hey, you know it's not some, all bad it's not all bad hey, dude. some young dude talks shit to you be like just call him short tank <laughs> anyway <laughs> shut your mouth short, short tank <laughs> what anyway so the, so here's anyway, the point. back to the glyphosate so here's the point of this so and they, they, they connected glyphosates to lower birth weights 
and to um, higher risk of having to be put in intensive care on the born neonatal, neonatal intensive care. <coughs> so what's my point with all this is that um, there's probably benefits uh, going organic with certain, with certain products. There's certain products, for example, there's certain fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. that have, that will carry a high pesticide or herbicide load. Um, and then there's others that are lower. Like if you eat an avocado or a banana, you peel the skin off, right. you're probably okay. If there's an exterior kind of a skin that uh, you can peel off. Usually those are better options. That's I, don't, right. know, I then, don't know where I heard that first, but I think that's just simple. Great. And I actually, it actually changes the common way I, sense, I grocery yeah. shop that way now. I don't hardly ever buy organic avocado or banana anymore. Just I save the money on that because of yeah. that for that exact reason because yeah, it's but got like a, strawberries. I think are the ones. Yeah, the strawberries, worst. blueberries, raspberry, all the yeah. berries for sure. Apples, even peaches, pears. Like that's those are thin skins, and you eat the skin. Yeah, like, mm, yeah. So, so that doesn't make sense. But anything that you peel the skin off and you don't eat the skin, it would make sense. Well, so trip off this, right? So the problem <clears throat> with glyphosates in particular is they're so widely used that they often, you know, they they'll go up and they'll evaporate and get rained down, and you'll sometimes find glyphosate residues on things that didn't even get sprayed right, with glyphosate. Organic. I remember when you did that interview with Dr. Bush that he, he basically said that we're fucked no matter what. Almost. He basically said that it, go, it goes up in the atmosphere then rains down on the organic well, so, food yeah. and the organic food's getting it So now Organifi, uh, the, one of the companies we work with, is actually, they're, they're organic, but then they're going to take a step further <clears throat> and also get tested for glyphosate residues. So they'll guarantee that not only they're organic, but they're glyphosate uh, residue free. Oh, wow. So clean, clean, clean. You're not getting any of that shit. So I think it's uh, this this kind of stuff, and, and I don't want to get people mixed up, by the way. There's an order of operation. If you're eating too much food or you're eating junk food, I don't care if it's organic. Or if you're not eating enough protein yeah. intake. Yeah, like, getting that. There's way more important things there's at this point. There's a hierarchy for sure. Right. But if you've handled those kinds of things and you're like, okay, well, what's important to be organic? Um, I think protein powder is important because of all the ingredients that are involved and what's in there. I, if you take it every day, I should say. So if you take it daily, certain fruits and vegetables that uh, get just hammered with them uh, make a big difference. Um, but then other things don't make so such a big difference. So. Yeah, well, this this is the thing. I mean, Organifi has been great about, even when that study came out about heavy metals that you know made their way through a lot of these like um, – quote unquote organic or vegan protein powders like they you know definitely didn't show any signs of, of including that so they they've done the work in terms of like trying to keep their products super uh you know pure when it comes yeah. to all that stuff and supplement and supplement companies are notoriously just yeah unregulated or whatever yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of yeah shenanigans every out time there. they come out with a study do you remember that one that came out while it was a long time ago I don't remember what company did this. It was a third-party company, tested 10, I think it was 10 products. All big names, too. Supplement products. Yeah, yeah. And nine of them either didn't have what they said they had, yeah. didn't have nearly as much as they said they had in it, or had other weird shit that wasn't on the label. That's ninety percent of the shit that they tested. Dude, that sucks so not, bad. Not a good. Well, you know the worst part about something like that too is I'm the knee-jerk reaction is to is to send in and have the government regulate, and that's the part that I get weary about talking about that no. stuff because you say that and then everyone's like, "What? What the fuck? Regulate that?" You know, and then you then it's like, "No, you don't want that either." So it's like that's just going to be part of the game, right? I yeah, mean, it's like it's having an infection on your foot. And then the answer is, well, just cut your leg off. Like that would, that's not necessarily it's, a better. It's not what people think, <laughs> no, they think dude, of regulation. <laughs> let's put, the, let's give, let's give the bad people the more power. To no, you just got to find the good companies. Oh, that's it. Go. Just looking for that's third party. That's going to be, I tell you what, finding good companies in the next couple of years is going to be really interesting, man. I tell you what, we're going to see uh, very few people, I or a few businesses that we saw explode in the last, I think, five to 10 years, I think, hang around for the next couple of years. What do you think? Do you think we're going to see that? We're going to see a lot of fallout. I think you're going to see massive fallout yeah. in, in the next couple of years. I, I look back now and like, I kind of kicked myself on our timing of angel investing. I like, mm. go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I, know. I mean, we literally, when you really think about it, couldn't have timed it worse. Right. I mean, we really entered that, that part of the market in the, the latest, later stage. So, now the saving grace is that, 
it's their their partners that we do advertising with the show, and so we've leveraged that, and so we're kind of playing yeah, with house money think, a little bit. I, when I look at the people that we're, we were uh, working with, I, you could try and fucking put a dress on it all you want, bro. It's still a pig right now, uh, dude. Yeah, it's not. It's not pretty. <laughs> it's not pretty. Was, it's just gonna be. It's just everything was overinflated. Everybody was, you know, fifteen times EBITDA, twenty times EBITDA. So at the bare minimum, everything's gonna come back down to reality, and yeah. I think that. Also, all these valuations that were you, you know, we bought into at, I think, are going to dramatically come back down, which means immediately loss of equity. And then, if you're lucky, they survive the shitstorm that's going to happen in the next two to three. Where years. do you see? Because uh, layoffs usually follow. <clears throat> that's right? coming. Right stock now. market goes down. It's coming right now. So markets has fallen. You saw what you guys see? You guys see what Elon said about Twitter? What do you, oh, he's going to seventy five percent of the workforce is gone. As as Take their 7,500 employees down Woo. to 2,000. Wow. That's cutting heads, dude. And so, and the, and so. That's also embarrassing. How, suck, how sucky yeah, okay. are you? No, no, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, they probably weren't doing much. Supposedly, okay. This, the, he's like, he's going to be the first, but then all the rest are to follow. They've all been hi on a hiring frenzy for the last five to ten years just flush with money just, not even real not even real cash though just on on valuation so just keep getting money we're, we're growing yeah. we're, we're growing we're growing we're growing so it's just pumping more money into it more money to it, higher 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 yeah. higher scale, and scale, so scale. what what the prediction is is that we everything's going to get tightened up all these companies like like facebook like instagram all they're all going to have to scale back dramatically and start to show real profits in order. Now that is, I'm not saying that any of them are going to die, but to your, your question, I think that you're going to see 20, 30, 50% layoffs on some of the biggest companies in this okay, area. I'm glad you gave smaller percentages. Cause hmm. I, I think of all the, the social media companies, Twitter is the least well run, least profitable, le worst convert. One of the worst converting Yeah, like uh meta so there's a, a lot of fat they needed to cut. Meta's done a pretty good job, so they're probably at the top. I don't, you so know, I don't even, I, I don't even know if I would consider them saying that they're doing a, a, a good job. I actually think that they're still way over, overly uh, well, I mean, staffed. In comparison, too. yeah, in, in comparison. I mean, yeah, okay, and and then like, in, I don't think Meta's going to. I also think that Elon would be the the more extreme leader to do that, anyways, right? I think that he's more likely to go in. I mean, he's one, he's buying it with that intent, so he's going to go in and cut heads. <laughs> do you guys remember that movie, <laughs> Office Space? When the guy that they bring in those like efficiency experts yeah, to come yeah. in, yeah, and then they just have the guy sit down. They go, "So what do you do? Yeah. What would you say you do here?" It's like, what, what's uh, your name, I, Naga? Na, 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 not yeah, gonna work you're here. Not gonna anymore. work here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I bet such a good movie. They're yeah. gonna sit down with people at Twitter. So uh, what do you do? Yeah, I uh, I scan tweets for trigger words. Okay, and then they take that. <laughs> yeah. Next, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You but I mean, it. imagine you're right. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, unemployment or employment is a lagging indicator on the economy. Yeah. You, everybody is start, all these big companies are starting to tighten up, which means we're going to see these massive layoffs and you have massive layoffs in companies that were handing out shares and paying crazy inflated salaries. And so mm. that, that is even, and then we're in the, in the belly of the beast here in the Silicon Valley. That's where most of these people are employed. Do you see an increase in Uber drivers? <laughs> uh, that's actually gig economy dude that's that's a, that's a fair assessment i mean there may be I, other i mean like like it's a temporary way to make money if you're gonna get laid off like i would immediately look at you know resources like that out there oh oh i mean no, all joking aside if i needed extra money the first place i would look would be one of those yeah 100 percent. yeah be people, like, people it, make good money doing that and actually. not just that it's just you could jump on it well and you could yeah. do multiple you could be you could be lyft you could be uber you could be doordash you I could know. be uh, uber i mean you could do all of it and then and work yeah no there's a lot of people that make decent money doing totally. that stuff too speaking of social media uh did you guys hear about tiktok mm. monitoring uh oh, certain yeah. citizens yes no using, i thought this was adam's not, uh, yeah. <laughs> news it, well i had read about it as well oh, okay uh but this is and it, just because we're talking about social media so this is one of those things where when people read about it, they're shocked. And so then I'll, I'll position it like this. A company that is owned, this is a social media company that's widely used in America, mm -hmm. that is owned by our biggest competitor that is also ideologically opposed to us, so they're, they're communist country. Has been caught spying. And <laughs> is using that social media company to monitor certain citizens. <gasps> what? 
how could this have happened? Yeah. I mean, the way that's worded, though, like, don't you think that's happening on all these platforms? I mean, wouldn't you be like a really bad FBI agent if you didn't utilize all those tools that we you have all these idiots that put all their information yeah. where I'm at, what yeah. I'm doing. Right. If I'm trying to if, okay, if I'm like, I don't know anything about being an FBI. Agent. <laughs> Meanwhile, Biden's on TikTok right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sir, like, are we doing this yeah, with, yeah. with yeah. Facebook? But I mean, I mean, you, I, mean I don't, TikTok to I don't know anything about it, but if I'm trying to solve a case, <laughs> I'm probably going to like, look to all the social media platforms. Like, you know what? Hey, did anybody think about actually just looking his name up real quick yeah. on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram? Saying, oh, look, the asshole, the perpetrator's right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he, just so, a, he just took a picture so of his I would, I would think that they're, yeah. everyone's being monitored yeah, but this somewhat, right? But this is different. This is, first off, you, you already know my position. I'm a. I. I, I think this is. Yeah, no government should should use any of these entities to monitor you because it could. I mean, it, we know that they they don't act very well. But this is different, though. This is a foreign comp. This is a foreign country, ideologically opposed and competing with us. And there's constant back and forth espionage and mm -hmm. messing with each other and psyops. That's always happening. Yeah, their but, Huawei phones had all that embedded in yeah, it. Yeah, so, but it's just, it's so, yeah, this is, to me, this is a higher, another level, right? But it's not shocking. I'm with you. Yeah. It's like, like, this is, oh, you just learned that this is a big thing, and this is a thing, and everybody's shocked about it? No shit. Now, yeah, of course. I, now, when you hear that, too, like, because you guys tend to get a little more worried about, I, the first thing I think of right away is just, the, you know, China's extremely competitive with us, uh, especially uh, economically. So I think that they're, it's just to make money. It's like to, we're monitoring people so we could sell them shit better. No, no, no. They, they're monitoring certain citizens. Well, what are the who are the certain citizens? That's what the that's what the data. That's what came out. Yeah, they're monitoring people of interest. So probably people are interested. People that spend hell of money on e-commerce. Uh, maybe no, 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 no. Hold on a second. Like who, who are the top ten people no, no, who spent no. money online last year? Hold on year? a second. Let's no, no, no. You, you might be right, but mm -hmm. take it a step further. Right. So let's say there's a Chinese-owned uh, computer chip factory or cell phone company or whatever. Yeah. They'll use that to monitor. They'll use TikTok to monitor the CEO or important figures in competing companies. Mm. So they could use that to compete, right? Uh, because they own those companies. Yeah, yeah. It could also be uh, politicians, uh, people who create legislation um, or influence le legislation, anybody of interest. So if you're the country of China, I mean, it's, all, it's basically you want your companies to be American companies and you want legislation that helps you. And you may want to promote uh, images and messages through TikTok that disrupt society because that's what you want. You want us to be a weak society or push. Let's say you want Marxism to gain favor because that's your ideology. And you're like, it's not popular in capitalist countries. Could you mess with the algorithm to push out subtle messages that continue to push the youth in that direction? You could. Mm -hmm. So this is a very powerful, very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. I, I don't deny that. Yeah. The question is, what are the motives? You know, I feel like it's to win. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, really? Yeah, I mean, kind of. Yeah, sure. To to win win over customers and make make hell of money. I feel like it's always the money thing. Yeah, yeah, it's always that money and power. Yeah, I mean, look, I agree. I don't I don't disagree with that. I just think that it, I think that the it makes news and headlines, and it it seems I think sometimes scarier than what it really is, and it's really just bottom. Like they're getting good at finding ways to. Now to, here's here's mm -hmm. the here's the rub, right? So a politician in America yeah. would come out. And say, hey, this news came out. China is using TikTok to spy on us, even though they're spying on us too with uh, Facebook and everything else. Mm. So then what they'll say, mm -hmm. we need internet regulation to keep you guys safe. That's the that's the the Trojan horse. Yeah. That's the Trojan horse. Yeah, we need them to make sure uh, they hand select yeah. the content. You guys want to be safe, Please. right? We need to be in control of the yeah. internet and we need to regulate all this shit. Because you oh, never know man. what China's going to do. So you guys were talking earlier about uh, what's his name again? The the Ted, not Ted Bundy, the other one that eats people. Oh, Jeffrey <laughs> Je yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah, the Dahmer. one that eats. People. Did you guys see that? It's yeah. uh, the hungry guy. Did you guys see the the whole uproar about the costumes? Yeah, yeah, I was going to allude to that, but yeah, that was part that just of hijack it. your, your yeah. news. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of it. Bunch, yeah. of, bunch of news takers. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, yeah. but yeah, um, the other point was like so. There was a, another one. I never heard of this guy. He was a, a serial killer. I guess he killed a few people, not quite as many as, as Dahmer, so probably didn't get as much publicity. But he did some 
just real nasty things uh, to these bodies and actually went to the morgue and like dug up, you know, some bodies and all these things and made like furniture out of people. Ooh. I had no idea this guy existed. Ed Gain, I believe his name is, what but like made like lampshades out of skin, what? made like little coffee tables. Like, Shut up. I was like, this, you know guy's, this guy's creative. You know who else did that? It's creative. That was, uh, one, uh, was it Dr. Mengele? Is he the Nazi scientist that experimented on, on oh, God. Jews? Yikes. They did that. They did wow. which? Yeah, terrible. I didn't know that. Humans are capable dude, of a, dude. horrible, so, terrible I remember I told evil. you guys that it would be... Uh, you know, Dahmer would be the number one costume. And now what people are, people are saying, if you dress up like Dahmer, I'm going to well, kick so, ass. Well, no, there's, you know, you, well, who's coming forward are the fucking victims. Of course. Oh, yeah. And they're enraged. They're enraged at Netflix for even making the show because they're like, they you've it. now glorified somebody who has fucking tortured our family for the last, I don't know how many decades. You know what makes me upset about this yeah. is I get the blame on Netflix. I get it. But God damn it. Take responsibility consumers if you don't click on it and watch it netflix ain't making shit like that well yeah but i mean okay yeah. the the victims aren't fucking watching it it's everybody else that's right that's what i'm saying not, i'm not talking about the victims i'm talking no. about everybody that complains about shit like stop watching it you know what i mean mm -hmm. don't click on it don't watch it that's i mean it's such thing. a it's such a, a a weird thing to have to discuss right because it's like uh, everybody in here is obviously pro free speech and that we would never say oh you can't talk about this yeah. right yeah but then at the same time too you i have incredible empathy for the family that Went, the families that totally. actually went through all that stuff. So it's like, where's the where's the line here? There's right, I mean? and it's a weird human sort of conundrum. It's like we're drawn to these like tragedies and I these. Th we're just like, it's there's this curiosity to it because it's like I would never in a million years like think up these things. Did you, you well, we're that? also awful opportunists too. Like so, like right away that that comes out and it's like you're a costume designer and you're like, oh my god, because you know, because you know, consumers this is a want fucking it. layup. Let's make yeah. costumes out of it. Let's promote this on it. Let's make memes out of it. So it goes like right away. You see the opportunity because you, you know consumers want it. You know it's yeah. you know it's crazy. A lot of, maybe people don't know this. You, I think you know this, Justin, because you know weird shit. <laughs> uh, serial killers often yes. get tons of female fans when they're in prison. Yeah, love notes and women who like right. follow them. What's the, what's the psychology the behind ultimate that? Bad boy. Do you know psychology right. on that? Doug? No idea. What's it? What's the psychology on that? Uh, I I, 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 I'm, I'm look, look it up. It's, I can it, make him a nonsense man or something like that. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. no Doug hit power. it. Fucking woman always trying to change you. That's. that's <laughs> It's like the ultimate challenge. He wouldn't do that if he was my it's man. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's, oh my god. That's cute, bitch. You got him to open the door, yeah. but watch this. Yeah. Oh man, poor guy. <laughs> like, especially the ones that like murder women specifically. Yeah. They're like, oh hey, here's my number. Ultimate you know what? Challenge. No, no, no. Look it up. There, uh, there is a psychology. There is. I've actually this, looked it up before. It's the same that. reason why vampires are so attractive to women. Remember, we read about this. Vampires are attractive to women because. They're sexy looking, but they have the wisdom of a super old man. They could kill you and they're murderous, but they're so enthralled by you that they refuse to kill you. So it's like this ultimate like. So you got to blame romance novels then. Yeah. Is that what we're doing? No. No. no I think it's connected. It's like he's a crazy, uh, God, poor guy, went through terrible things. <clears throat> But I know if we, you know, if we met, if he, he just, just yeah, love me so much, right? He just didn't receive enough love. Yeah, he's <laughs> gonna love him. Yeah. He's not gonna stab me. Well, hey, by the way, somebody in our forum uh, commented and said, "Hey, Sal, where's the data to support what you said about posting serial killers' names and mass shooters' names that it causes more of these things to happen?" So mm -hmm. I said, "Okay, well." I'll do the Google for you. And I, <laughs> let me That's, whip out the uh, the light machine. Yeah, yeah. Use, use the he's the most advanced invention ever that we all have. Anyway, I looked it up, and sure enough, there's data. And there, in fact, there was a international group of scientists that had written. I think it was in 2017, had written a paper urging Western nations, please, 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 stop printing these people's names, stop making them celebrities, stop mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, don't even talk too closely about the details because that will trigger other people. See, what's to what's interesting thing. to me is that we fucking know that because mm -hmm. remember when I've shared with you guys the, the stat on bank robbers? Yes. Like that happens all the time and they don't make the news because we make, they make sure to suppress that. They make sure it doesn't get out there because they're so goddamn damn, successful. Damn banks. 
So, mm. but I mean, think about this. We're not willing to do it for a serial killer and stuff like that. We're not going to suppress that freedom of speech. Let it everyone do it. Money. That, that's right. Mm. But it comes to protecting our our in, our federally insured money. We're gonna we're gonna keep that under on the wraps yeah. when the guys come in and rob. I was rob a fan of giving them shitty nicknames instead of like glorified <laughs> ones. The tiny pee pee killer. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that way when he's in prison. Yeah, yeah. Doug, he's how, like, many, uh, completely how, opposite. how many banks are robbed a day or banks robbed a oh, week? Oh, wait, Give hold on, a, hold on. This is this? the term, by the way. Okay, hold on. Some mental health experts have compared infatuation with killers to extreme forms of fanaticism. They view such women as insecure females who cannot find love in normal ways or as love avoidant females who seek romantic, romantic relationships that cannot be consummated. And it's called hybris. Uh, what does that say? Hib is it like the hybristophilia? This is like an extreme version of the, the woman who like hunts the married man all the time. Maybe uh, it's like the extreme, like the, the ultimate. Can't I can't. Them. The ultimate. I can't have them, wow. but I'm still gonna try and get after them. Wow. There's a second though. There's a second theory here uh, uh, because of sexual arousal uh, of triggered by danger. danger. That's the one I'm more familiar yeah. with. I've heard that. That's why. That's why. A, is that why you wear the ammo belt around your chest when you have sex? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you said that because it works like so well. A big butcher knife. I just walk in. Just, just walk like, coffee shop. What's that for? What's that for? This guy is oh, crazy. You'll see. You'll yeah, see. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah. How was that tonight, babe? I know you want to have sex, but I'm enraged right now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. let's just try. Oh my god! Is that blood on your shirt? <laughs> that's stupid. You I just killed someone. Want to have sex? Yeah. <laughs> but hey, you know that's a true thing though. That they find that. Um, <clears throat> That there was this, I read this article, it's pretty funny. They said one of the best places to take a date if you're a guy is to a scary movie. And they said that does it increase mm, chances? Increases arousal and yeah. women. Is it, okay, I've heard that. that's a really cool, that, interesting. We, I tried that. We did uh, statistically uh, speaking. What is the what is <laughs> the whoa, 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 what'd you just did say? Our first date with Courtney is Hills Have Eyes. Did it work? Did you no, think? it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> Because it was, I don't know, was it Rob Zombie film? It was like it's too awful, gory. Dude. It, was too it was gory. like so gory. There yeah. was like like mutants raping people. <laughs> yeah, like, you need like uh, like boo. Scary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you need, need like, boo scary. Ah, yeah, gotcha. boo scary, yeah, not like gory. Not like, like you went yeah. too hard. <laughs> like, yeah, it's dude, too hard. Like, you didn't get, I had nightmares. You didn't get a kiss or anything. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, but it was like a, a part ways kind of. I'll see uh, you next time. Uh, oh shit! Just, thanks for, awkward. Thanks for picking the movie, yeah. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> it even Did me. you pick it? No, she picked <clears throat> it. Oh, oh she. Okay. I'm sure someone's written a blog on this. There's got to be like a thing on the like the most successful like dates to take uh, someone out on. Well, think about it. It's like they said in, in this article. They said scary movies, <clears throat> scary rides, haunted oh, yeah. houses. Okay. Because uh, they get the the fear it's titillating, but then they're safe. And you're the dude that's there. Uh, I wonder if that's like the, uh, like a formula. So you think that's yeah, like that you, does sound. I want to go that. What if you do like a, like a, a triple threat? You do like all of them. Take it to a hundred. It's like a guarantee. Hey, yeah. did, you hear about that one, did you hear about that one guy? There was a guy that literally paid uh, paid his. I think it was his friend. Oh, to like mug him. To come yes. mug him and this girl he was trying to date. That's a move. And then That's he, a power move right And there. he like flexed on him and the guy got scared and ran away. And he, <laughs> <laughs> he said it hella worked. That's great. <laughs> that's fucked That's up. a good one right there. You yeah. imagine at the wedding. That's the, a good the one. The guy shows up. Yeah. Oh my God, that's yeah, the guy that's the wrong guy. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> Let's that's, go. That's a funny thing. That's, exactly. yeah, that's a great That's move. a dirt bag, by the way, that's guys. A, don't make it, don't do a dirt bag. That's not a like dirt that. bag. Move. It's a good move, right? It's not. It was hiring somebody <laughs> pretend to fight you. <laughs> hey, what it's better than the magician hat guy's <laughs> advice. Hey, what if then a real guy tries to show up? <laughs> yeah, you get your ass. She's kicked. like, oh, yeah. you don't don't mess you, with me. My yeah, boyfriend will yeah, fuck she you talk, up. She talks shit more. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, keep babe, it in your mouth. Babe, we should leave now. Kick his ass like that one guy. He was way bigger. Anyway, crazy stuff. <laughs> it's crazy stuff. So um, I got to tell you guys, uh, I got a very interesting compliment the other day. So you know how there's compliments you can get from men that mm. are like good? And then there's other compliments you get from men that are like weird. Questionable. You ever get a weird compliment? Oh, yeah. I got a weird compliment the other okay. day. I had a dude tell me, <clears throat> I was at Santana Row. I was, I was going to pick up a suit or whatever. And this guy goes, hey, where'd you get your pants? I'm like, what? <laughs> I like your pants. I'm like, these are, 
These are Viore. There's a store right over there. And then he it's left. almost like they were painted on you. And then I felt I felt super weird. Like, wait a minute, dude. Before there's a dude, a dude just complimented me on my pants. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Did you? Did you walk in? Were you in the studio <laughs> when, you when, when what Justin was just doing before we got started? No. Okay. So well, obviously we're doing more shoots and stuff like that. So just and Justin's in charge of obviously putting it together. So he has to like track down models. And so he's looking for like a male model right now. And he's yeah. like, this is the worst part of my job that I have to like slide in some guy's DM. <laughs> like, <laughs> Ask him if I can take so videos awkward. and photos of him. Bro, how do you start that He's conversation? Like, I, don't it's a cold call. DM. I don't know how to start this conversation. <laughs> like, hey, bro, you look really good. I see. <laughs> Shoot. Well, was like, what? I noticed you follow the yeah. mind pump. Thing. Is that, are you familiar with us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you, can like, you, can you send I'm some part of it? Can uh, you send some sample shots? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So I can see how, how you look. Can I see you in a little better lighting? You know, <laughs> oh my and, god! Yeah, I didn't know how he's to like, do he's it. He's the best one yeah. to be doing. But, oh my god, but, dude, it's I, awkward. But I got compliment on because the meta. These are meta, right? Meta pants from Yuri. So, yeah. It's yeah, the same ones. You should know it by now. I, people ke keep. I keep getting. Well, I got. We're a matching today. I got the same ones. Do though. you really? Yeah. It's like they're the best. They're yeah. like I can work out in these, but they look like slacks. Is that top of Viore too? No. Oh, it's not. I thought no. it was. I thought it was Viore yeah. too. That's why it doesn't look as good. Uh, <laughs> so good job. <laughs> you're, you're halfway. Looking good job. Good today, hey, so. oh, about economics. I got to bring this up, Adam. Okay, talk um, to me. Talk we were just me. talking about how everything sucks, right? Jobs are going to be going down. <laughs> so I read this great article on. It was about the myth that it's way more expensive these days than it was a long time ago. So you know how people say the following oh, relative to income. I'll, I'll I'll break it down for you. It was really I mean, it's such a great article. So in the article, it talks about how a lot of people, more and more people, are having less kids, and the number one reason is it's just too expensive. Yeah. So a lot of people are like I'm just having one or two. Well, yeah. why don't you want more? It's too expensive. Too expensive. <laughs> so they said that's actually false, and they actually broke it down and compared apples to apples. I, I can't wait to read this. Okay, so this is great. So in the article, they said, yeah. yes, we spend more money today than we did back then. However- We get more because of technology. Back then, you had one car. Yeah, okay. So that's- You a, didn't have a of car Of course, payment. that's a spend they're going to yeah, put. No, more, it's not a spend. We have more stuff. That's not a spend. That's apples to apples. Because you know what people are saying is like, oh, my parents, they totally were surviving off of one income. My parents can do it. You know, I can't do it. And they, in the article, they said, actually- if you had everything your parents had back then, you'd be way better off than they were. For example, they didn't have cell phones and cell phone bills, internet. They didn't have streaming services. Right, right. They didn't have That's the two argument. or three cars. Yeah. That they had to pay for and pay. I mean, I, that, I mean, I would go delicious and that's a sour always the, that's always the argument, though. You know what I'm saying? That's all. That's always going to be. The so argument. what's happened is we just in the 50s they would be comparing that back to horse and wagon. Not and true. On. Even no, 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 because uh, 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 partially, yes, you're absolutely right. Actually, you're correct when you compare apples to apples. Today we just choose to have more shit. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those things, you know. But well, I loved it because they actually did the math and they 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 took everything out. But then the you, the, the amount like okay, so I there's I've seen articles too on like mm. uh you know the average the average household, especially where we live, like requires that two people work in order to survive and and make the, like where in the fifties and sixties you could live off of one income. You can't even live off of one income now. Mm. Now your argument is income if you, taxes. You can't. If you yeah, can. if you lived like your your parents did in the fifties and sixties, you technically could. If you had a plug-in phone and you had a, you know a four thousand dollar car you drove and you had one thirty six inch boob TV yep. in your house and. Yeah. Well, now that's extreme, but I think it does really the, the lesson in this is you 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 got to weigh the things out yeah. and there's always going to be sacrifices and people spend just on two things alone. There's two things alone that are crazy today versus any other time. The amount of times people go out to eat. If you go back 50 or 60 years, nobody went out to eat except for rare occasions. And number two is uh, financing vehicles. <clears throat> people have great, what was the average car payment today? Oh, it was uh, seven hundred bucks. Yeah, over seven hundred bucks yeah, yeah. is the average car payment. That's crazy. You know <clears throat> that alone. That's seven hundred dollars a month that you would, could save if you just bought a car cash. I would. I wish I would have read Millionaire Millionaire Next Door when I was as my teens and early twenties. If you're listening to this and you're in your teens or early twenties, I finally got Katrina to read it. She just read it. Um, I wish I would have read that when I was much younger. The thing that I was most fascinated in that book was that the most common thing with millionaires 
had nothing to do with their jobs. It included plumbers, carpenters, lawyers, mm-hmm. doctors, all of them. The most common thing was the ability to live significantly yes. below your means. Yes. And that's what they all had in common. And, they, and in fact, they had, the, they had in that book, they do these really cool like uh, 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 studies or whatever on people that, that the way they spend their money and the the people that make the most money actually spend a smaller percentage of that on things like cars. Yeah. So as you get wealthier, that, well, why are they wealthy? Yeah, because they, they have, have those. Habits. They have those those habits. You know what's a funny one that everybody brings up and everybody rolls their eyes every time, but it's my favorite example is uh, gourmet coffee. Nobody spent a dime on that thirty yeah. years ago. Yeah. You know how many people spend every day five dollars yeah. or more on coffee? When, you know, growing up, coffee was like was it well you 50 know cents you know it's crazy or, you, know? you know what though it's not that crazy because. It's it's a legal drug market. Imagine if cocaine was legal. Legal. There was still coffee back then. My point is the gourmet coffee. Huh? I mean, everybody drank coffee when we were growing. Yeah, up. but they made it popular as shit. It wasn't as popular as it was now. It was something that like old people did back just, then. Yeah. Black. Once coffee you got with once you got introduced to kids. <laughs> once you got introduced to <laughs> kids, and we hooked them on it. Not to mention, I mean, it'll be interesting actually there. is to see the the level of caffeine in coffee back then to uh, what it is today. <coughs> I, excuse me. I would make like the argument. Folgers. Yeah, I'd make the <laughs> argument nothing. that the caffeine, the caffeine content in in a normal Starbucks today is extremely probably higher than what it was. I don't know. I don't know about that on a per ounce basis, but I I would agree with you that people consume probably more caffeine generally <clears throat> than they used to, especially kids. Kids didn't. When when I was a kid, it was a big deal. I remember sneaking to the convenience store to buy Jolt Cola. Mm-hmm. I really think that just Jolt wasn't- Cola had like <clears throat> seventy milligrams of caffeine in it, yeah. which is like nothing. And like a thousand uh, grams of sugar. Yeah, I think it just wasn't marketed to the younger generation, and, no. and it was a big aha moment yep. when they did it. It was like, oh my god, we are totally missing out on getting all these young people hooked on this drug early instead of waiting until they're fifty or sixty and start drinking on it. And that was it. And then it was game on. You know the benefits of coffee? They did a study to show that you know they're like, oh, coffee decreases risk of you know cancer and improves health and all that stuff. It's, it has to do with the coffee and not the caffeine because they do studies on decaf and you get almost the same benefits. So it's really just about you're drinking like a high oxidant container. So it's not the beverage. caffeine. It has everything to do with the, the bean itself. That Correct. You're getting. Oh, yeah. interesting. Caffeine can have health benefits, but it's a double-edged sword. It also can have health detriments. And the amount of caffeine and Well, the and it's also addictive. Yeah. And we, I mean, how many people die from caffeine a year? It's actually pretty yeah, decently high. That's one of the. I, I, ironically, we don't talk about that. No, right? it's so funny that we don't. Or, or emergency room admissions. Due what to are, yeah, what are, what are deaths on on caffeine, Doug? But it's it's pretty high when you compare it to like. I mean, it's more than you would think. Yeah, and mm-hmm. considering we don't talk about yeah, it, or emergency room admissions are pretty high with caffeine. People will go in thinking they're having a heart attack or something weird, and it's just no, you had too much. It's very rare. Uh, oh, it not, is. Yeah, ninety-two reported deaths in twenty eighteen. Okay. Oh, okay. It's the admissions that's uh, oh, maybe yeah, just hospitalized yeah. and over it. But I thought still, there was. I thought it was higher than that. Yeah, it's actually remarkably easy to die though from caffeine. So I'm surprised that it's not higher than that. But I think people, you know what it is? God, this is a good conversation. People are so we're so well versed in caffeine and we use it so much. People titrate it pretty well. Yeah, we're right. Pretty adapted to it. Yeah, like if point. like if nobody ever used it before and they tried it once, then they might have a tendency to go too you went far. right to like the powdered version, which was always problematic. Oh, I couldn't yeah. believe they started putting that and the the powdered alcohol out there in the market. That was such a bad idea. Did they did they pull that? Is that something I they think did? They, did. <laughs> they pulled the powder the the caffeine because there was a kid that he he misplaced the decimal. Mm-hmm. So it's in milligrams. He did grams. Mer- so instead of taking two hundred milligrams, he took two hundred grams. Oh my God, died. Yeah, just oh. thinking of the times where I've misplaced the decimal before <laughs> taking stuff. Have you? No, you like really? <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure I talked about on the show before. I've done that before, where I like, oh, oops, you know, where the uh, pharmacist. My, my <laughs> yes. one of my nickname. first. Well, you know, scary. Not the pharmacist. Scary, yeah. you know, scary story for me. Remember, um, what is the one that? could fuck your thyroid up that's popular i i mess with that and i'm I'll never oh forget that. why can't uh, i think of the name of oh it you're right talking now? about this computer all oh oh computer all i remember i i didn't oh I, fuck yeah i miss i misjudged that and took like 4x the dose you're supposed to and i thought i was gonna die i really did you scared, had a bad time oh yeah. it scared the shit yeah. out of me yikes and i could literally like i felt like my heart was beating outside of my chest and i was like okay i'll never do that there's again. been some permanent damage <clears throat> huh it's probably some permanent <laughs> damage. <laughs> Chalk it up. Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Add it to the, add it to the list. You already work out yeah, stuff. Yeah, so you're, yeah. 
Maybe <laughs> offset it a little bit. Maybe. Let's see what happens. Maybe. I have my share. I just remember the time. <laughs> this is my favorite story ever. People send us stuff all the time here. And some company oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. sent us. There's another decimal miss sent, by me. <laughs> bro, sent us. A few hold on a second. A <laughs> bottle of this like, it was like an edible, right? But it was a beverage. Oh, and it was this. like a, a cannabis yes. uh, drink. Drink, yeah. And Adam looks at it and he's like, oh, uh, cool. This 10, you know, the number 10, 10 yeah, milligrams. It looks maybe. like a soda. Let's just drink it. Pounds the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then he brings, and then you had the wherewithal to actually think, eh, Sal, did I take the right? This is after you already swallowed it. Yeah, yeah. I looked at it and I said, well, there's 10 grams yeah. in the whole thing. And you're like, oh, that's good. That's a dose. I said, no, no, 10 milligrams. Yeah. I said, oh shit, bro. A hundred, right? Yeah, you were up. Oh, fuck. Oh, you were in the secret tree had to pick you up. Yeah, in the yeah. universe. I couldn't drive that home. It was so bad. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> that's wow. You that had some epiphanies that day. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was pretty <laughs> sure I created something really cool after that. I'm that was sure. pretty cool. Sure you did, man. Dude. You figured everything out. Hey, so uh, <clears throat> so I I think baby's coming soon. Oh, boy. Yeah. Are you, know, you feeling that way? Do you know when um, there's that period is right she, before? she nesting? Hard. Yes. Mm. Bro, all of a sudden, she went from tired and everything hurts to my house is like- Yeah, nothing's- Organized so. and clean yeah. and shit. She's never- She's like organizing like pens and like <laughs> yeah, <all laughs> color coordinating. Now is this a is this like a, is groceries. this a real proven phenomenon yes. that happens? Yes, it is. It's yes. proven. It's 100%. not like a, like a, a, a wives' tale. No, look it up, Doug. I, it happens on average. I want to say a week or two before hmm. the baby that the that they get, that they deliver. Is it like that accurate too? Like you can like Somewhat. within a certain mm-hmm. amount of time. You say yeah, if, if your if your wife starts doing X, Y, and Z. She starts trying to eat spicy food. It's uh, what well, you got like two days, right? That's- oh, she's been doing she's been doing all that shit, bro. Yeah. Now, are you going? Okay, so she's Katrina, trying to like, Katrina- like yeah. That's what I mean, start when she starts trying to really well, the urge to clean and organize is known as nesting. Nesting during pregnancy is the overwhelming desire to get your home ready for your new baby. The nesting instinct is strongest in the later weeks coming upon delivery. It's it an- is an old it is an old wives' tale. Hold on, hold on. That once nesting urges begin. Labor is about to come on. That's the AmericanPregnancy.org website, which I don't go to a midwife <laughs> website. Fake but nonetheless, <laughs> nesting is is well documented. Nesting yeah. is a real. I mean, I've thing. definitely heard about it forever, but I, I didn't know if it's like an old wives' tale that it means that that's coming or, or not, or just it, you know. Uh, oh, here nesting typically starts towards the end of the third trimester, around week thirty-eight or. 39 of pregnancy, a few weeks before your due date. There you no, go. That's not telling us That's anything. what to expect. Well, it's getting close. Well, it's yeah. getting close. Either so, okay, way, it's, yeah, her when, body's telling her something. When Katrina and I, because we were a whole month early, so we were, she didn't do none of that shit. We didn't even have a bag packed. We didn't have anything. I don't know if I told you guys, remember I left the, the rover running in the fucking, the, the ambulance section with yeah. the oh doors, doors open, that was keys my experience in, with car was running. Yeah. <laughs> they came up, I was up in the thing, they were like, uh, sir, is that your car down there? <laughs> oh yeah, I come down there, literally, all the doors are wide open, cars <laughs> running, <laughs> keys are in the- <laughs> You think you're so calm, but oh, reality, no, not at all, dude. Oh, dude. I remember that. We didn't have we didn't have nothing ready, dude, at all. So that one came a surprise. Yeah. So are you are you packed? Yeah, no. Like- Jessica got she got the go bag set, okay. ready to go. Um, <clears throat> by the what's way, it, I, what's it look like? Is it how how big? You know, because go bags for different people. Like right. I've seen go bags like this, and then I've seen like <laughs> it's like a duffel bag, and in it we have. Um, yeah, what did you, you have say? to remove a lot of your supplements from the bag? Right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. you know, she's, make some room. She's like yeah. this. <laughs> My wife. No, she's she's actually. Pretty Pretty good. She's, she put. She put. So do we really need your magnesium? On yeah. The no more silly husk. It's not for you. <laughs> no, no. She put all the stuff that she knows. Yeah. All, what, on. What, yeah. What's yeah, all in there? Let's, let's hear it. There. Let's hear it. Let's hear we it. We got some snacks. Oh, we packed uh, the creatures of habit, the protein oatmeal. The- oh, okay. She ha- has she had it yet? Does she like it, or is that for you? Those are mine. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now she'll she'll eat some, but she'll eat some. But you know what she, we're bringing for her? What? Because where we're going, the birthing center has a kitchen. Uh, so nice. I'm literally bringing, so this isn't the go back because we have to keep it in the fridge, but I'm bringing her eggs and she likes eggs and uh, toast. So that's what we're bringing. Oh, that actually tastes good to her, huh? Oh, she loves that it. That was one of the ones that hmm. contributed. Eggs every day. Yeah. Every day. Oh, interesting. Every single day. Oh. So um, that's for her. And then in there we have like clothes and then there's like this, we have candles, this lotion that I put on her. And to be honest with you, I don't know what else she put in there. Yeah. She mostly packed it. <laughs> <laughs> I just know where it is. Yeah. Get that. And bring it. And she put like a big post-it yeah. on it to remind me. 
Don't forget the thing in the. In the I know, just the knew fridge. with Everett, I was not gonna. Ma- I was gonna make sure like no Christmas music was on the playlist. That that just snuck in there because I had. To- <laughs> What? What? I remember this story. Yeah, I had like I had one of those Bluetooth speakers, and I had like a playlist that like she wanted, kind of this background music, and everything was nice. Wait, background while you're while you're you're, like Sade playing or something like that. She just wanted music, and so I was like, interesting. Yeah, and so (laughs) I started playing it, and it got through the playlist. I didn't make it long enough, which was the problem. So it was right into Christmas music, and it was just like (laughs) (laughs) like no, well, what is this? Like she lost her shit on me, dude. Over there fucking with yeah, the Spotify. I was like, oh, 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 scrambling, dude, just trying to like, hey, hey, it's all it's correct all, it. It's all calm music, but then like dramatic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I, it would have been it would have been worse if like his heavy metal list came yes. in. Yeah, some death metal. Oh, <laughs> god, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the baby comes, dude. Oh, I probably would have like had to, you know, get a whole that house for myself. Oh. Babe, fucking push, yeah. babe. Oh. <laughs> Soak it up. Yeah, Soak it up. Yeah. Dig deep. Oh. <laughs> Bro, your wife giving birth has got to be one of the most, uh, like, as a man. Stressful. Well, you just can't do shit. Well, you were just useless, dude. Let's just call it what is. There's nothing. We can't beat anybody like, up. Yeah. I wish there was like a... Like there was I'm like not a, even a coach. I don't get like a jersey yeah, or nothing. nothing. You're just there. Nothing. Yeah. You're, you're, you're in everybody's there, way. And you're stressed out and you want to help her. There's nothing you could do. You're like, fuck, I can't beat someone like, up to help like, you. Like, where's the like, towel? Yeah. Let me, uh, let me just, just, let me just sit here, you know? Yeah. Don't touch me. Touch me. Push here. Don't put, okay, I'll do all that shit. Yeah. There's nothing else I could, <laughs> yeah. you know, just support You're doing me. great. You know, speaking of a playlist, did you, are you guys have you guys seen the new Netflix uh, docuseries that's out on Spotify? Oh, somebody told me to, to check good. that out. I heard What's it's it good. called? Yeah, it's good. Uh, maybe Doug can pull it up for me. It's not called Spotify, but I mean, you can't miss it because it's got like the- Oh, it's something about, about Spotify? It's something about Playlist, right? Like a, yeah, I think it's called Playlist oh, or something yeah. like that. I don't I don't remember what the name is. Maybe if Doug's done sexting, he can look it up for me. It's uh, it's like he just a, sent off a booty pic <laughs> over there searching Pornhub. Yeah. No, no, we have a burglar alarm going off in Truckee. Oh, we do. Oh, okay, well, you get a, you get a pass, oh, Doug. Get for this. We're getting robbed right now. Yeah. So make sure you check. It better there. not be the bear again. <laughs> no, it's house cleaning. Well, it might hungry. be the cleaner since you were there. It is, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's really like going on. So what do you need? <laughs> the, the new Netflix docu series on Spotify. What's the name of it for the audience so they know? Uh, it is a uh, warning though. It's, um, you know, it's uh, dubbed over because it wasn't made here, but Uh-oh. still hella good though. I Just mean, put subtitles on. I, Cause I didn't know, I didn't know the full story of how that all unfolded. And so if you guys, if you guys don't know how that all unfolded, mm-hmm. I think it's a really cool, real quick, the playlist, the, the playlist. playlist, real quick, Adam, are there still s- spots available for the live event we're doing here? <laughs> Okay, there is the last I checked, there was only, I think, two seats left for the VIP, but I think we have half the seats still left, though, for the regular. Okay, so if you, wanna, if you want to come to the Mind Pump live event here at Mind Pump headquarters, you meet us. Max Lugavier will be here. Mindpumplive.com. You go there and see if there's something available. Also, since you're doing announcements, um, it's Friday, November 4th. Yeah, Friday, November 4th at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is when I do the talk with Chris Nagibi again. So that was so good. The first one was so good. So we're going to, I mean, we'll see how this thing goes. If I, and this, I haven't had a chance to actually promote it on the show. So if, if we continue to get a good showing for it, I'll keep it going. If the showing sucks, then I don't, it's, you know, it's a waste of time to do mm-hmm. that. But I mean, if the showing is as good or better than what it was last time, which was pretty keep damn good, doing. yeah, we'll keep it going. So, um, yeah, it'll be on Instagram. So, and those of you that are asking, like, oh, it's so hard to do it on Instagram. Okay, Instagram is the easiest way for me to test this. If it gets legs, then we can talk about what it, it could be a potential YouTube video in the future or a Zoom or maybe a podcast. But for now, if you really want to see it keep going, then then join the, the live, uh, live stream on IG. Hey, check this out. There's a company we work with called Live On Labs that makes nutrients that are delivered with pharmaceutical-grade technology. So you might take vitamins, but they're not really getting to where they need to get. You actually just get expensive pee, not with Live On Labs. And right now, you can get free lipoglutathione when you bundle it with the B-complex and vitamin C. Go check this company out. Go to liveonlabs.com. That's L-I-V-O-N-L-A-B-S.com forward slash M-P for that hookup. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Zach from Arkansas. Zach, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, just like everyone says, I just want to thank you guys uh, for all the content. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, 
my friend Dave actually put me on a couple months ago to you guys. As thank you guys. Um, yeah. So Dave. for reference, I am five eight and about one sixty five, and I'm currently going through Maps Powerlift. Um, I decided I want to uh, use my weightlifting uh, for something instead of just going to the gym. I want to start competing. So I'm actually going to start competing in January of next year. So I just had a couple questions kind of relating to powerlifting and the program. Okay. So cool. first I want to ask, um, is it okay to kind of throw in like an extra day uh, to the program? Like uh, I know it starts off four days a week. Is it okay to throw in like a, I don't know, like a full body, uh, like on a Saturday or a extra day in there? I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. look, yeah, of course it's okay. You can do whatever you want, but I, I think your question is, will it help you? Right. Or is it going to, is it going to be better for your, your results? I, I got to ask you why, why do you want to add an extra day? Um, I know a lot of callers call in and say they have that athletic mindset and I do come from an athletic background. So I was going about six days a week and it's just kind of hard to limit myself. Okay. That's why. So are you looking, is this more for like mental, the mental aspects or are you trying to get better at powerlifting? Uh, both. I would say more mental, but. So then I I would go to the gym. I just wouldn't do the program. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I would go to the gym, maybe do some core work, maybe some mobility stuff. Yeah, accessory Um, stuff. Stretching, like just, just like recuperative kind of stuff. So you get that mental part. Simultaneously, you're not negatively affecting your potential strength gains uh, with powerlifting. We, I mean, powerlift was written with uh, Ben Pollock, who's a, obviously a high-level powerlifter. It's great programming, and you got to trust the programming. It's almost – the answer is almost never to do more when you're following, yeah. uh, you know, something like that. It's- Especially when it's your first time kind of taking a stab at this, I think. Uh, and, and that was the focus of this program was really to take your, your entry-level person who's never done it before and kind of build them up to the point where they can compete at their best. So I also think it really matters even more so for powerlifting than it does for a general program because – you're you're working with percentages and you're trying to scale up in, in the entire program and you you overreaching even the slightest bit will set you back in a week, which will will hinder your progress, which is more detrimental in the game of increasing weight on the bar more so than the average person who's just trying to be fit. Like yeah. if you were just following the program and you want to be strong, you want to look good and you know, do it an extra day, maybe you overtrain a tiny bit, not a big deal. But when you're trying to compete in power lift, like seeing incremental yeah. stress uh, management is everything. Yeah, very much so. It's like a, it's like an athlete. It's like a when you get into playing sports at the professional level, it becomes stress management more than it becomes trying to get better at that sport. Like you are in season, like an in season type of an athlete. So overreaching can be very detrimental to you putting extra weight on the bar, which is the ultimate goal for power. Yeah, here I yeah. tell you what this this will benefit both. Go to the gym. And do you have Maps uh, Prime Pro? Do not. Okay. I'll send that to you, Zach. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to work on mobility movements on that extra day that will improve your skill, technique, and connection to the deadlift squat and the bench press. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're going to be doing something. It's structured. So you're not going to go in there and guess. Because I don't want you to go to the gym. I don't want to tell you, hey, go to the gym and just try to go easy because I know what's going to happen is you're going to do more than you probably should. So Maps Prime Pro's got mobility movements for the shoulders, the hips, the ankles. ankles. I think all of those are going to. Uh, I think if it's just those three, if you want to be simple, hundred percent, you just focus on those joints uh, specifically. Will really help to enhance everything you're doing. Yeah, like one or two movements for each of those areas. Practice them on that extra day you go in the gym, and they'll simultaneously improve your skill and technique with those three lifts, which is going to make you stronger at those three lifts. So if you have better control and um, you know, mobility from a control standpoint, you're going to be stronger in those lifts. So that'll that'll hit both of them, and it's some structure. So I'll send that over to you. Your next question was related to stick, sticking in power lift all the way till April when you have a, a meet potentially, uh, and I would say yes because we're you're again, it's like treating you uh, training for a sport. If it were your general population, I would say oh, rotate to another program. <laughs> but if you're trying to compete potentially in April. I'd say run it and then run it back again. That would be my advice. Yeah, and uh, I, I would. The only thing I would change is maybe adding a week in between. Uh, that's a deload. Mm-hmm. So run power lift. Then a week after that, you're doing like thirty percent your normal weight. You're just kind of going to the gym. Just kind of it's like a total deload week, and then start the program again. Um, studies show that uh, deload week after training mesocycles 
improves strength and muscle gains. It actually it's better than not doing that that break for most people. Awesome. Um, I do kind of have like a two parter question. Um, so I struggle with my uh, caffeine intake. I would say I definitely consume way more than I should in a day, and I find it very difficult to kind of cut back. Um, so that's kind of the first question I had is what's the best way to attack, like limiting myself in caffeine and maybe eventually eliminating it completely. Yeah. Good. Very good question. Caffeine is no joke. That is a very addictive substance. The, the, the side effects of going off cold Turkey suck. A lot of people get migraines yeah. or they're exhausted or they de get depressed. Um, and such, so it's just, a, it's a shitty drug to come off of. So here's a strategy that I, used on myself and I've used with clients and it seems to be the best um, to mitigate those kind of side effects of coming off. Take your total dose of caffeine. So I don't know how, whatever your dose is, let's say it's 400 milligrams a day or 300 milligrams a day, cut it down by a quarter. So do 25% less, do that for about three or four days and then cut it by a quarter again and then a, a quarter again. So after about, I don't know, three or four weeks, you'll be down to almost no caffeine or zero caffeine. Now, when you get to zero caffeine, you could take something like rhodiola during that week or two, or I would recommend three or four weeks off caffeine and take rhodiola instead. And then you can go back on caffeine and start at a low dose because it'll be resensitized. What about this, Sal? I mean, this is- How much are you taking right now just to give us some clarity here? I would say four to 500. Yeah, so I would oh, go down dude. from 400 to 300. You're not too bad, bro. And then go down to 200 yeah. and then down to 100. So you got yourself like four weeks right there where you could bring it down. I would even, I would actually, so, I mean, what is that? Two, basically two energy drinks or three, two to three energy drinks a day. Are you doing like a pre-workout? Like 200 each two, 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 two yeah. coffees? Is that what? what uh, brought a coffee in the morning um, and then an energy drink and sometimes a pre-workout. Okay. Okay. So yeah. the way I would do it is I would actually just, I would just pull cut one. I'd cut time. one, one time, one at a time out for like Sal's time period, like he said, yeah. but I would replace it with red juice. That's, I, I That's saw, got the rhodiola in it. That yeah. I had so much success with that. That made a big difference for me. And, and so then it would look like this. So you normally do three. I pull one of those off and I replace it with red juice. Then I pull two off, actually replace it with two red juices and then eventually three. And that would like, it made me still feel like I was still getting my kind of caffeine, even though I wasn't it still gave me like this kind of natural yeah. energy without the crazy stimulant feeling that you get from. Yeah. For people who are like, what's red juice? It's Organifi red juice. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, yes. That was, I, I, and I've done this multiple times and when I've done it without it, I, I have less success as when I use the, the red juice. Yeah. So it's got the, it's got rhodiola in it and it's got some other stuff that helps kind of mitigate that crappy feeling of coming off. Definitely so, worth it. Okay. Yeah. And my last question was just kind of the, uh, the diet aspect of power lift. I know it, um, it doesn't come with a, uh, particular diet. Is it just, you think, uh, I should just be heavy protein intake, maybe up my carbs. You're going to be in a weight class? Slight surplus. Um, I'm shooting for 165. For, so your current body weight? Yeah. I think I'm a little, I'm like 168 right now. Something like that. Oh, so you want to drop weight? Mm. Uh, and compete just a little though, right? Yeah. So you're yeah, going to have just a little bit high protein, moderate carb, moderate fat, um, and eat at maintenance, maintenance calories. Yeah. Stay fed. That my, my advice would be make sure you hit your protein intake first and foremost yeah. every day and then stay fed. Now I'll say this right now. And I've, I've, this is the advice I've given wrestlers and other athletes that compete in weight classes. When you're on that border, um, and your question, you know, you're thinking, should I lose weight? to go in a lighter category or build strength and be in this heavier category? The answer I typically give people, and it depends on the person's experience and all that stuff, but you're new. You're new to powerlifting. It's a new thing for you. I'd say don't worry about the weight class and go in the higher weight class. It's going to you're, you're, it's gonna be hard to gain the strength that you want and all that stuff while simultaneously trying to manage your body weight down to 165, at least for your first contest or two. And then from there, you could kind of play with it a little bit. But yeah, I've seen people didn't just- I, Didn't I hear he's, he's like three pounds off though, right? He is. So he's going to have to drop three while simultaneously try to gain like huge strength gains in, in MAPS powerlift. Like that's 
You know, I mean, I guess you could do it, but it's your first competition. I mean, I guess, I, okay, so I think the advice that you're giving, and I, and I think is right, is don't worry about weight so much. There you go. Like, just try and get strong from now till April. And then when you get yeah. maybe like a Figure month. Figure out which weight class Yeah, makes sense when you get about weight. a month out, then we could assess. And, you know, reach back out to us. If you get about a month out from your show, we can talk about where your weight is at. Like, do I think it's a good strategy for you to drop 12 pounds in your final week of powerlifting to go to a meet? Yeah, because you know what happens I'd is. I'd say no. But if you were only got it, if you got to drop two or three head because what could possibly happen if you eat good and balanced you might build a little muscle you might lean out a little bit during the process that that would be the yeah most but because this is his first contest so here's what'll happen you'll look at the weight classes and be like how much do people i don't know deadlift at the let's say 185 or whatever weight class versus 195 and the difference may be 25 pounds or 20 pounds let's just say okay i'm gonna make it up numbers here i know for me that I'll be stronger and more competitive at the higher body weight. Even though it's a higher deadlift, for example, I know at the higher body weight, I'm going to be more competitive than I will trying to make the lower body weight. This is something you're going to have to figure out, but I don't think it's something you can figure out right now. It's your first contest. So I would say go into it and whatever weight class you fall in, well, that's the one that you do. I think that's good advice. Yeah. I think that, especially this is your first This is your first one. There's exactly. so much you're going to get better yeah, at and you're going to learn. It's like yeah. the last thing you need to be is stressing a cut, a cut. Totally. Heading into that. That's like so much to juggle. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. All right, Zach, we'll send yeah. you Maps Prime Pro, okay? All right, thank you guys. You got it, man. Get back to work. Yeah, make those calls. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. You know, that the whole weight class conundrum is so... You want to talk about uh, like a, a whole nother level yeah, yeah, yeah. of like... That was good advice. Programming that was good advice. Like I, you know, I heard three pounds right. and I'm like, that's nothing. I mean, that could be just a little bit of water right before he goes. But you're right. After he's been training from now till April, he could potentially... He could put some weight on. Yeah, maybe. he could potentially put 10 pounds on. And the last thing you want to do is like the final week you're going in and like you try and do a hard cut Dude. to get in and then you lose all your fucking yeah. strength. Plus, that you plus your numbers go down. It's like, <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, plus you guys know this because you guys are really experienced and he's not, right? So he's new. But when you get more experienced... I know what body weight the strength gains right, right. start to like not make sense. Like, yeah. okay, if I go from 210 to 230, I may add, you know, eight pounds to my, you know, deadlift. Th who cares? Right? Well, you also, you there's also, there's like that cutoff. You right? also know that there's such a massive individual variance in some guys, just like fighters. Like some fighters fight at like the weight that they walk around at really yeah. good. Some guys can drop 30 pounds and be just a beast yeah. in that class, and right. some do just better dominate. by. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that that's similar, right? Where, you know, he's got to get a couple of these under his belt to kind of find, oh, where am I strongest at yep. when I'm at? And then you try and be like more strategic about weight. Yeah, I used to, I used to tra uh, train this wrestler and um, he was always trying to make weight. And I convinced him once, just go in heavy, go in the higher, see what your coach says or whatever. And coach agreed to it. And he's like, bro, he goes, I was so much stronger <laughs> and so much faster. He goes, it was so different. I was so much better. So I'm like, I mean, we, we put so much emphasis on this weight thing because we look at these top level athletes who figured mm -hmm. it out. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you're not like that level where you really know, like, you know, uh, trying to cut weight, like you oftentimes yeah. just show up depleted and weak and not feeling good. I mean, we didn't have any weight cuts or anything, but we were always like told to gain weight, you know. Opposite. And yeah. And so it was like, for me, I, I ended up putting on about 20 pounds over over um, the summer and then coming back, like I was so Slow. unathletic <laughs> and sluggish and I hated it. And yeah. so the, the next season I cut back and I was so much better exactly. of a player. You just have to figure it out. Our next caller is Ricky from Pennsylvania. What's up, Ricky? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Good. All right. So first, yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank you guys for all the all the content you guys produce. Um, it's definitely been helpful to help me build my, my exercise habits and, and reinforce some concepts. So even though I've heard you guys repeat some things over the years, um, you know, hearing those messages when they're more applicable has certainly been uh, helpful for me. Cool. Awesome. So, my, my question for you guys is, is based around rowing it as a method of cardio exercise. So I, I wanted to hear your opinion comparing the rower to other alternative forms of, of cardio, as well as comparing it to the sled. So I hear you guys tap the sled all the time. Um, I've used a sled and like the sled. Uh, but my, my hypothesis essentially is that as long as you keep the movement explosive, um, that, you know, it has that similar be benefit of not having the eccentric portion of the movement and can uh, improve your cardio fitness while maintaining or even building some, some strength uh, for the full body. So my goal really is to optimize 
kind of that cost benefit of adding in that cardio exercise while maintaining or improving strength. And I'm essentially proposing the the rower as a optimal solution there. Okay. I, I love the rower. Is this, yeah. are you, is this a bet that you made with someone? Cause the way you questioned, you wrote the question is, uh, would you agree that the rower is a superior form of cardio compared to, I feel like you, you made a bet with someone. You're like, let me ask mind pump. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, not necessarily. So I, I did a Spartan race in the spring and a friend of mine who was uh, training to do it with me, I, I had been touting to him all along the course of our training I knew it. Uh, that the rower was one of the best ways to prepare for that. So it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely helpful to have your guys, you know, I'm hoping to send this clip to him. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I, I could tell. Okay. Yeah. I think you, know, you can use the sled for a cardio. I just don't think it's as pr- quite as like effective of a use of it in terms of what I'm in terms of building volume for the legs and having that type of a stimulus. I think it's amazing for that. Um, but uh, I mean, sprinting with it, doing more anaerobic type of uh, cardiovascular with it, I think works, but uh, you know, in terms of comparing that to the not rowing e- machines, not, not even, not, not even close comparison. on the, not on the VO two max level, no. not on VO two max. So there's no way. I mean, unless you're, unless you have like a mile long yeah. stretch, you you're can push it for days. <laughs> you can push the sled <laughs> for a half hour straight, like, like straight forward. But the, uh, the rowers gonna give you that. Now that being said, and I think we've talked about this on the show plenty of times is that nothing would get you better at a Spartan race than running Spartan races. Like as far as the cardiovascular endurance that it takes to do that. Right. So now I think the, the rower has more carryover than the sled. If I had to choose, and this was to, to win an argument and, uh, and one of us decided we're going to go all, all rower. One of us said, we're going to just, just, just push the sled. I think the person that got really good at rowing would have an advantage for sure over the person that uh, just did the sled. It's okay. So Ricky, here's the the challenge I have uh, with this question. I I need to know number one, why and and for what? So, okay. VO two max, there's general VO two max that you can build up, but it means nothing unless it's applied somewhere. And it means nothing unless we know why, right? So, if somebody says, um, I want to improve my VO2 max, the question is always, well, why? Well, I want to get better at swimming. So what's the best form of exercise right. for that swimming, right? Because there's a technical skill aspect that's involved. So like you could have a, a, a professional cyclist and a professional marathon runner both have, let's say the marathon runner has a better VO2 max tested than the cyclist. Well, guess what? In, in, a, in a competition to see who could cycle the furthest and the best, the cyclist is going to win. So it really doesn't matter. So I got to know why you're asking this question and what for. Now, it's just, if it's for just general VO2 max, then, I mean, I guess we can make an argument for the for the the rower versus others. But again, unless it's a, it, you're applying it somewhere, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Now, if your question is, what's the best way to build stamina and endurance and not lose muscle or maybe simultaneously build muscle, that's sprinting of any sort on any form of cardio. And I would say the sled, oh, yeah. a sprint on the sled Sprinting is well, going to build said, muscle. Well, yeah, because you could load that. Yeah. So it's not, it's not even, okay. then that, it's not even close, no. right? So if, if it's yeah. if it's muscle retention or building of muscle. While getting stamina. While getting stamina, the sled's going to win yeah. that. Yeah. Work but capacity. It, but I mean, if it's just pure VO2, which one's going to be better there? The rower's going to be better than that. Yeah. But so. is there something specific you want to improve this for? Is it for the Spartan races? No, and you guys kind of hit on it with that that last point. So I've done Spartan races in the past. I'm not necessarily training for anything specific. It's really that that general cardio fitness for just an active lifestyle and you know recreational sports, whether it's pickup basketball or or whatever the oh, case may be. I see. So you're looking for something to improve your stamina for all the other fun stuff. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Your best bet is to do a combination of things then, because if you're going to be playing basketball, rock climbing, hiking, surfing, you're going to want. I'll tell you a story, Ricky. I when I used to when I used to train uh, real hard in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, at one point I built up a lot of stamina, so I could roll for hours with multiple opponents. It was really hard, but I, you know I built up this tremendous stamina. Then I went and did uh, kickboxing with a friend of mine who was a Muay Thai fighter, and I was fit for Jiu Jitsu. I was so surprised how gassed out I got after 15 minutes of Muay Thai, okay? And he said he experienced something similar when he would go and do jujitsu. And that's because of the, the 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 skill aspect of it. Like you could be, you could have incredible fitness, but just be so yeah. exhausted. You're not energy efficient with it. So energy and efficient. So if you want to develop energy efficiency for like recreational stuff, well, of course the best answer is to do more of the recreational stuff. 
But if that's not an option, then I would mix it up. I would do some rower. I would do some running. I would do some, you know, some sled because then you're going to get kind of this general type of carryover. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, Ricky, I think you probably need to stay home and watch more basketball because if you think that that ISO ball that the Sixers play has any chance against the Warriors, you're mistaken. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, uh, Adam, in, in, in fairness, fan. when I submitted the question, it was before the season started and I saw what this thing looks like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ho hoping they turn it around soon. <laughs> oh man, well, Doug, just, Doug just pushed me. I just sent me a note. I just saw that, so I had to comment on that for sure. Ricky, let me let me send you uh, let me send you Maps Cardio. It's a it's an endurance based program, but there's strength training involved. <laughs> you can follow the program as it's laid out if you really want to build endurance, or you can look in see how we programmed it and get some ideas uh, for your own great workout. Great program for him. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you got you so it, much. Thanks awesome. for calling in. Thanks, guys. You got it. <laughs> Doug put that up there. <laughs> That's fine. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you now, have you guys have you guys experienced that where you're like super fit for a sport, go play something else, yeah. and you're like, wow, I oh, yeah. gassed out. Yeah, and you're just like, why? Because I was in such good shape. Like that was especially it was like basketball. I forget. I think it was going into Muay Thai as well. Like just how, but it's such a different different skill set, a different totally. way to move your body. So you have to learn all that and and how to be ef efficient with that. Cause it's just like, you're, you're trying to do all these things and brace and, and <laughs> compensate and, and your body's just like working overtime. There's gotta be some studies though, Sal, this would be really, this would be actually a fun study. On to just see. VO2 max? Well, yeah. Or just like, um, you know, somebody who just swam, who got it, like, let's say a, a swimmer who like got really good increased VO2 max, how much carryover that had to all these other general sports. This person just did it this way. Like which like one? Which one translates? Like I would best? speculate something like swimming, which incorporates the entire body really well and takes a lot of endurance to do that. You know, would have more carryover than say something that's yeah, like that's like a stairmaster. Okay, so just climbing up. You know, okay, so the, 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 there, I don't I don't think there's any specific studies like that, but there are studies looking at athletes to see which athletes do the best in other sports, mm -hmm. and the ones that do the worst in all other sports are swimmers. And now it's not because swimming isn't a great workout. Well, it's such a different environment. It's well, because what makes your body good at swimming you makes you terrible. Glide. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, it's really hard. That's different, though, right? Yes, you're right. That's different. Like I, I would, I yeah, would speculate you use the that. water a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, a, Michael Phelps is what six four you. or something like that, and he's got the yeah. His those, legs are as long those as body five nine. Right. Not conducive for <laughs> no. other sports. It's not conducive for other sports yeah. at, at all. And you, you do. You have to have this kind of relax. It's not. Uh, it's different. Different it type is. of power and strength that was hmm. required to do it. It's definitely more endurance. So I definitely don't think. It's like, it, how would no, they I test it? Basketball is probably but I would, up there. The question is, yeah, how would they test it? Too. Like they, yeah. they they do VO two max tests. Well, what you would do is you would have like a uh, you would they would all have their sport that they train, and then they would all do other ones, and then you'd see like fatigue, right? You have to measure like fatigue. Or well, they heart done, rate they've or, done they've done VO two max uh, studies to see who's measured the the highest VO two maxes in yeah. history. Uh -huh. Lance Armstrong, and then there was this marathon runner that was up there. Maybe Doug could look it up. They both had hit like the highest scores, I believe, that they'd ever seen in VO2 max. But to test people in alternate in other sports, there's so much involved. It'd be so weird. That like, is, even like tennis would just exhaust everybody, but so, so much lateral movement nobody ever does, yeah, right? And so yeah. that would just gas somebody right away. Totally. So yeah. it's really it would be a really hard thing to test. But maybe Doug can find the VO2 like who's who's tested the highest VO2 maxes in history. And I'm pretty sure that was Lance Armstrong was up there as one of the. Well, do, can you well, even use him as accounting? Can I know all the drugs, no, no, not, and well, everything else he's like <laughs> shooting in. Oh wow, look at that! So male, who, what sports are those? Ninety six point seven was the highest uh, VO two max score uh, that anyone's ever seen. I think he's a cyclist. Yeah. Which, uh, by the way, just to give people well, an example, the sport is really to look at. Did you see the difference between the top, the that. best ever measured for men versus women? Yeah. 97 like 20, for a man, 20 78 some yeah. for, for yeah. a female. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this, that building, oh, uh, Max, oh, so, sorry, Lance Armstrong's was 85. So yeah. how, you know, it's another cool thing that I've read about VO2 Max that I, th I find really interesting is how quickly you can increase that. You're right. Yeah. Like, you, you know, it takes years to build strength. You're really strong. It's like, measurable within a week. Yes. Like you mm -hmm. can make a huge difference did in you, a did very you, short period of did time. Did you see what it said, by the way, just so people understand? The average person's VO2 Max is 45. <laughs> so you had Lance at 85 yeah. and these other people at 90 something, which is insane. By the way, one of the easiest ways to raise your view to a max, build muscle. More muscle, that's why men score so much higher. M muscle is a uh, one way of being able to consume energy and oxygen. Mm. So just building muscle increases your VO2 max. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Now, of course, there's like a fall off, like a, you know, get so much muscle 
and then there's you know, but the, but average person builds muscle, VO2 hmm. max goes up right away. That is interesting. I, w- I wouldn't think that. Yeah, huh? Yeah. It's I, I, it makes sense when you say that. We you? have our VO2 max guide, and in there is like it breaks down all the ways to boost your VO2 max. Our next caller is Jessica from Massachusetts. Jessica, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi, how are you guys? Great. All right. All right. So, um, I wanted to let you guys know I've been listening to you for a little bit over a year. Um, and I think you've taught me more than any of my certifications have. <laughs> right. um, and I love your approach um, to health through all facets, not just physical, but also spiritual and mental. Thank you. So before I ask my question, I'll give you some background about me. I have my list. That's why I keep looking down, because if I didn't, I would forget everything I'm supposed to say. <laughs> so I'm 21. I'm 5'6". Um, I'm 125 pounds been a personal trainer for a little bit over a year, lifting consistently for about two years now. Um, I've always worked out since I was about 10 years old, on and off. Um, Always tried to be smaller. Um, I had a lot of disordered eating when I was really young, so I've been about 115 pounds my whole life until the last couple years I gained some weight finally. Um, The last five years I've been trying to get bigger, gain some muscle. Um, So my question is, I feel like I have an imbalance in my upper and lower body more than I guess the average woman would (laughs) Um, because I see with my clients, you know, generally there's something there, but I feel like mine is a little bit more intense than other people. And I'm just trying to figure out if I'm doing something wrong or if I'm missing something Um, because, you know, it's harder training yourself than any of your clients. (laughs) So my, some of my lifts um, my hip thrust is like a one rep max is like 300 pounds. My deadlift is 165. Um, my squat, I have really long femurs, so it's 125. But then my bench is like 75, and I even have a hard time now hitting 75. Um, and even the look of them, my legs look a lot bigger. They look muscular. My upper body looks kind of narrow, small, just kind of lean. Um, so I wanted to see if you guys had any ideas for me what I should try next. Yeah, well, well, two things. One, um, I can't obviously see all of you, but I can tell you work out. You might be a little harsh on yourself for sure. With somebody, <laughs> those numbers are all pretty, pretty. That's standard, normal. Yeah. yeah, yeah would would you some let, let's somebody in your life that's close to you? If you yeah. were to ask them, do I look imbalanced? And you know that they're going to be honest. Would they say that you look imbalanced, or is this something that only you would say? So they have said it. So I have um, some friends that don't work out, um, and I've asked them like do I really even look like I lift? And they've said like your legs do, but your upper body is, you know, a little, but not too much. Yeah. I have some blunt friends. So. Okay. so you look like, you look like, a, you look like, do you look like one of those moms? Sometimes that's on, good. Do you look like one of those moms in Pixar movies? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely, um, glute dominant, but I also have, I guess, bigger quads, but nothing crazy. But yeah, my arms, my shoulders are really narrow. I just feel like I look kind of, I don't know. My upper body is not too crazy, not too impressive. I mean, when you when we would have when I'd have a client that would would say this, oh, I, we would just shift our our focus yeah. on yeah. more upper body, which is not normal. Mo- most people need mm-hmm. more help developing their lower body, and there's t- tons of benefits of us doing that. But every once in a while, I would have a client uh, that would say this, and and even if uh, I I didn't think it so much, if they wanted to focus more on their upper body, that's part of my job is to help them do that. And we would just kind of build, we would build our programming around more upper body focus, which when you look at most maps programs, I'd say, and they're, I would think they're evenly distributed, but then we would just shift, you know, uh, some of those leg exercises over into other uh, upper body movements and just put more focus in that area. And I think you could definitely uh, bounce out. It sounds like you have a really strong lower body, so it's not going to suffer from you know, taking an, a, a day or two off of it uh, a week and I, and putting that focus on some upper body stuff. Yeah, so so really important that the, the part that Adam said, here's the most important part, don't just add volume to your upper body without taking some off of your lower body. Okay, is that mistake? Mm-hmm. Mis- a big, this is a really common mistake. Somebody will say, well, I want to develop my back more or my shoulders more, whatever. And then what they'll do is just add just volume add more, yeah. and not take volume off. There's still a, a, like you still have a capacity for total volume. So I would take some off of the lower body and and then add that to the upper body. Also, you know, be patient with yourself because here's the deal: everybody, except for like professional bodybuilders, everybody has parts of their body that just respond 
and other parts of their body that just seem to take a lot longer. Um, everybody's like that. Like, you know, my, I, I can make my quads grow just by thinking about it. That doesn't work like that with any other part of my body. So I modify my workouts kind of accordingly. Um, and then just be patient. You're young. You're, what did you say you were like 21? 21. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you're young. And you just now started, you know, gaining kind of healthy weight. I could tell you look really fit. Give yourself a little bit of time. The muscle building process is a slow, it's a really slow process. It takes a lot of time. Um, so I would just, just do what we said and then give yourself some time. And then over the course of a year, two years, I think you'll start to see the the difference. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So what, by the way, are you following any of our programs? So I'm not right now. I have, um, before I am on a personal trainer's budget. So, you know, I do my best. Um, I have prime prime pro, and then I also have anabolic, Good girl. which I did earlier this year. Um, right now I'm doing, I do. I think I do stuff like anabolic a lot, which might be my problem, no matter how much I try to get out of it. Um, I tend to go back to something like anabolic. Yeah. And I definitely, you know, change my rep ranges, go from like higher up to 15. Then sometimes I'll do like six sets of three, um, three reps. So I'm definitely switching it up with what I'm doing with that. But yeah, I have definitely tried focusing more on like, my upper body lifts, like just the bench, um, the bench, the rowing, um, doing all my compounds and then doing, I do a lot of accessory now for my upper body, trying to change some stuff around. And I basically for my lower body, just do like squats and deadlifts, just trying to keep them. Yeah. So I going. would, I, uh, I would, I'm going to have Doug send maps aesthetic to you. Ah, beautiful. That's what I was going to say. Um, when you, in part of that, you, you'll pick one to two muscles that you want to develop. So pick obviously, uh, two upper body muscles you want to mm -hmm. develop. And then a simple tip uh, that I would change in our programming. Look, so when you look at our programs and, the, and you have the workout of the day, uh, always choose the first exercise, uh, either you know bench, upper body. Oh, yeah, uh, upper body exercise, opposed to doing what most people do and what I, is normally ideal a squat, a deadlift, or any of the, the lower body. So leave the, the lower body towards the, the end of the workout and prioritize Good idea. the, Good advice. the, the yeah. upper body exercises. So, you know, it's, we, I think naturally we always talk about like the, the squat and the deadlift the squat because of how amazing they are. But you, if you start to reframe, your focus is more like the overhead press and the bench press are mm -hmm. your big movements like in the row. Like those three I'm going to be – thinking about a lot is trying to get strong there. And so prioritize them in, t in the workout when you're training. Yeah. So upper body and then end with like, wait till you're done with your upper body, then go lower body and then focus sessions, pick some upper body stuff. That's the perfect program, I think. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you guys. And, and we'll send it, we'll send it right over to you, Jessica. Thank you so much. You got it. Thanks for calling in. Uh, I yeah, I feel like she's being really hard on herself. I think so too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard for we can't. She's in her car. It's hard for us to see, but she looks good. I mean, you, you, I I'm sure that that's her. I mean, her low, her legs would have to be huge because she had a really nice, well developed upper body. Well, you know what Her I shoulders. What I have and it, I, what so is it is it from a, a muscle fiber standpoint or what? But I know that uh, I forgot what percentage I've seen uh, or uh, how many times easier it is for a male to build uh, muscle in their upper body yeah. versus a female. I forgot. Yep. Like lower body, we're we're very close to this. Same. We're much closer. Yeah, and so you're a lot of times you could get a, a, a female client to actually get a damn near as strong as a, a as a, a comparable male in the same weight, lower body, upper body. There's a massive advantage for men already. So when I get a client like this, that's that all. That's all we would really do is we would just yeah. shift the focus over uh, to upper body. I also think that um, it makes a big difference too as you lean out. So if she were to lean out a tiny bit, she might really start to see the separation in her shoulders and things like that. So those. those well, that's her Instagram. I mean, she looks she pretty. Looks, I mean, look pretty balanced. Yeah, she looks great. But I know how I know how critical. Oh my god, dude, she looks phenomenal. Yeah, so she might just be. You know what she's got? She just has muscular legs because they yeah, develop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's normal for a woman. But her arms look freaking no, amazing. She, she looks great right there. Yeah, Jessica, you're being too hard on yourself. But yeah. hey, look, nonetheless, it's your workout. That's right. Follow yeah. the way we say it, and you should be. I mean, okay. I, honestly, she looks so good that just simply doing the the prioritizing the upper body and should the workout, it, I think that's going to do wonders. Totally. So. Our next caller is Isaiah from Minnesota. Isaiah, what's happening, man? How can we help you? What's going on, guys? Glad to be here. So first of all, of course, I want to say. Thank you for existing. Thank you for everything that you guys have do. You've dramatically changed my life and put me in a position where I can change other people's lives. So for that, 
Like seriously, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Rad. So I'm diving right into the question, a little info on the client. She's a female, um, 61, five foot seven, around 160 pounds, we're currently running MAPS Anabolic. She's very familiar with you guys, with the programs. Well, we're running MAPS Anabolic three days a week, eight to 10K steps a day. And we started working together back in April. So we reverse dieted from 1500 up to 2400. Wow. We were adding just 50 calories every week, mostly from carbs, occasionally from fats, just kind of to keep them around like 30% of her calories. And then we went back into a deficit for about six weeks and literally nothing happened. Um, we tried to go back even further around to like 1600 just to see if maybe she needs a little more aggressive of a deficit to see things move along and nothing happened. So pretty low stress lifestyle. She was a bikini competitor from 2012 to 2014. She was put on over a hundred micrograms of Cytomel at one time along with tyrosine. Um, wait, did you say a hundred? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, lost her hair, a bunch of really, really, you know, bad stuff there happened with her thyroid. She's got, you know, that back, she's got her hair back, but you know, she's getting stronger. She's sleeping better. Her skin looks better, but just can't get leaner. Um, to save her life. Right now, we're back up to 2,000 calories. I'm trying to get us back to around 2,400 and really just hang out there for like three to six months and really recover. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. We've done some testing with Cabral, so I could I could bring that up if needed. Oh, I would love to hear what Dr. Cabral said. Yeah, because- now, now I totally remember. Right? So we talked on the coaching call at NCI, and I just thought this was a really interesting, very challenging situation because as I was throwing things at him, he's like, yeah, we did that. Yeah, we did that. Yeah. So he's done a lot of the things uh, that we would probably recommend. I'd love to hear what Dr. Cabral hmm. came back with, what testing you guys did with the, the functional medicine practitioners. For sure, for sure. So, I mean, we haven't spoken with Dr. Cabral himself, but that'd be right. that'd be awesome. But um, so progesterone is is pretty low, but I mean, that makes sense given that she's, you know, post menopause, she's not creating that corpus luteum anymore. So now most of that progesterone, of course, is going to be coming from her adrenals. So that might be something that we can look at, you know, maybe trying to heal the adrenals, but like her thyroid doesn't look, you know, terrible considering, you know, she's in her 60s uh, post menopause. Um, TSH is a bit low. No, not really high on the antibodies. So she doesn't have Hashimoto's. Um, A1C was a bit high. Um, vitamin D looks fine. Free T4, free T3 both look fine. So it's like, what, what exactly could be going on here? Okay. So, um, so here's what I think is going on. And I asked you those questions, uh, about working with a functional medicine practitioner, because there could be something there. But it doesn't mm-hmm. sound like there is anything glaring there, and I don't, I don't necessarily think anything's wrong with her either. the hu- The human body has a really amazing capacity to adapt, and some people's metabolic adaptation, either through life experiences or through genetics or a combination of both, can really move in that negative direction. Okay, I noticed you put here in the in the in the questions that she competed as in bikini in the past. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this was when did she compete in bikini? From 2012 to 2014, and in her words, she she crashed and burned yeah. after the very last one. So she did two years in her 50s, because she's 61 now. Yeah. Two years in her 50s, so this is post-menopause, and she, two years of, bikini competitor, uh, of competing in bikinis is gnarly. It's gnarly. Yeah. And she yeah. said she crashed. So um, there's this theory, in fact, I think it was Jason Phillips that brought this to me, that said that you, when you do that to your body, sometimes it has this memory. And it really, really, really develops this incredible ability to adapt in the opposite direction. You cut calories, boom, it becomes super efficient right away because of its is its experience in maybe something that you did uh, before, like crash dieting, that kind of stuff. And she did that for two years. I think she, you need to keep her where she's at and you need to focus on making her feel healthy and strong for a while before even attempting to do a cut because her body is negatively adapting or, you know, metabolically adapting really fast. You went from 2,400 yeah. to 1,600 calories, saw no weight loss. Her body is like, uh-uh, I'm holding on uh, to this weight. Now, the fact that you could bump her calories without adding lots of body weight, did she gain a lot of body weight while you did that reverse diet? 
dude, like half a pound, like maybe a pound from, you know, 1400 up to 2400. It was great. Yeah. And how much weight is she trying to lose? What's the goal? Um, honestly, probably not much, you know, like maybe 10 to 20 pounds. Oh, like bro, we're not listen, that far off. don't, don't, don't put her on a cut. I would keep mm-hmm. her here for a year and I, I would have a conversation with her and say, look, for the next year, we're just going to try and sculpt, shape, strengthen, make you feel really strong in the gym. And don't tell her this because you always want to under promise, but what probably is going to happen is in that year of focusing on strength and mobility and health, she'll probably get leaner. Mm-hmm. But I mm-hmm. wouldn't even say that because it might not happen. But I would hang around there for a while. Her, her body yeah. needs to get real comfortable with the fact that food is coming and that she's strong and that strength is the priority. Um, and I would, I mean, 10 pounds to lose, who cares? Keep her there for a year is what I would do. Yeah. And we've definitely been having, having that conversation. Her mindset around it is a lot better now. She knows that's what we need to do. And honestly, I've experienced this myself because I know a lot of coaches in the space start from like a place of like being in sports and like they're a hard gainer. Like I started on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. I was like five foot four, 230 pounds. I sucked at sports. So I lost 130 pounds, but I was so terrified to go to maintenance or to go at a bulk that I spent so much time in this chronic deficit that now, even today, when I try to go in a cut, it works, but like the hunger signal is intense. Yeah. Intense. Yeah. So th- that's, th- that's that memory I think you were talking about. It is. And you can't, because we often do this as trainers and coaches, especially the science based crowd, um, is they try to separate the physiological from the psychological. So, you know, here's the deal, Isaiah. Are you getting, uh, you know, for you, are you getting, you know, a, a stronger ghrelin response? Are you getting, stronger, you know, biochemical responses to going to a cut than let's say someone else. I don't know. Maybe it's the same, but your experience of that signal is stronger because of your background, which means it doesn't matter, which it doesn't, I don't care. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter. The experience at the end of the day is what matters. So, um, I think, I think you need to keep your client in this high calorie strength focused kind of phase for a while. Well, and a good way to remind her too is that, listen, you did a ton, and she probably knows that she did a ton of damage in those two years at that age of hard, hard, hard cutting like that. And so like, like, give me a little bit of time as if I'm a coach, I'm like, Hey, give me some time. You know, you beat it up for two years. Give, give me at least a year or so yeah. of really trying to, and, and reminding her how far we've already come. The fact that we've moved the calorie intake from 1500 to 2,400 and calories, you gain a half a pound. Yeah. And gain a half pound. We are kicking ass. Like we are doing really, really well. So just remind her that. Cause I know She's I, probably because of her past, she has this tendency to probably want to get leaner, yep. but remind her too, that's what got her in trouble, you know, those back in her 50s. Don't, like, and don't try to force this because what, what you may be tempted to do is be like, well, let's keep reverse dieting you and get you up to 3,000 or 3,200 or right. don't, yeah. don't force it, okay? Because uh, obviously her body is like trying to chill, right? Her body's saying, no, 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 I'm not going in any crazy direction. So just keep it kind of chill focus on the strength, focus on the muscle and give her like, tell her, look for two years, you did, you went the opposite direction. This ain't going to change in three months. You got to give me some time to really convince your body. It's okay to go in the other direction. And I'm going to tell you right now, you stay here for a year. She's probably going to get leaner anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I experienced that myself when I finally bit the bullet and just ate at maintenance or ate at a slight surplus. And it was very slow for sure. But I mean, of course, as you guys know, you feel better, you perform better, you sleep better. Yeah. And, um, what you said about um, not like trying to push it and go up to like 3,000 calories. This is kind of what I was talking about, Adam, about what um, Eric Trexler on Stronger by Science was talking about in regards to reverse dieting that like we don't have infinite metabolism. Yeah. You can't just keep pushing it. Like at some point, it's going to trickle over into just gaining body fat. Yeah. That, that was kind of like their main takeaway and like kind of leaning more towards like just bringing people up to where their maintenance should be rather than this slow, gradual increase. Like the results seem to be the same. One of them just takes a lot less time. So that's kind of what we're doing this time. Instead of adding 50 calories every week again, we're adding like 100, 200, just to get back to homeostasis as fast as possible. Yeah, that's 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 fine. So long as she feels good doing it and it doesn't mess with her mentally too much and all that, because you got to consider all that, okay? So you yeah. got to be careful with science because science and data can make you ignore 
your client saying, oh, I don't feel good eating this much. Oh, no, no, don't worry. We got to keep it. We got to get there faster. Like, don't do that because no. you could cause a, a reverse uh, effect from her psychologically, mentally, and then you're screwed because that's everything. Yeah. Okay? That's everything with your client. Eric's a great guy, by the way. We had him on the show. We're, we're, we're going to air that at, at mm -hmm. some point. Really smart dude. So I love their information. But yeah, dude, you got to take your time, bro. Take Have her take her time and it, have her change her focus. It's, it, it, it looks like her body is like holding on. But what's cool is it, it adapted in the other way as well. So she's got like, yeah. it sounds like she's got great capacity for strength and muscle as well. So at 61, mm -hmm. that's phenomenal. So reminder of that. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys. You got it, Zay. Thanks for calling in. Yes, sir. Yeah, I remember I had a client. This is kind of similar. <clears throat> not the same, but I had a client who had chronic back pain for years and years and years and years. And they couldn't figure out what was wrong. They did MRI and this and that. And the doctor's like, well, you got a slightly herniated disc. I guess we could try this surgery. She's like, no, I don't want to do that. I'll just deal with it. Anyway, she hires me and she says, will my back get better? I'm like, well, how, how long has your back been hurting this way? She's like, well, you know, over 10 years. So, so uh, I said, it, probably, but I'm not sure. But let's see what happened. I trained her for over a year and she got stronger, got more mobile. Everything felt better. The back pain didn't really improve until like a year and a half later. Mm -hmm. It was a year and a half later that she started noticing yeah. that her back started feeling better. And then a year after that, it became no longer a problem. And her and I would talk about this. And she's like, you know, I, I think there's a big part of the experience of pain. I wonder if it was just how so used to it and so, because it then as it started going away, I started letting go of it, and then it totally went away. I said, I mean, that totally could be it. But psychological, you component. can't separate the two, you know. Yeah. And so, like, you know, situations like this, we tend to try to separate the two. Like, good luck. That's not how it works. Yeah, I think he's doing an incredible yeah. job. I mean, I, smart kid. Like yeah, it. no. I, when we talked on on NCI, and I was kind of going around and around with them, like, listen, I you know, I think you've done, you've checked a lot of the boxes that I would have checked, like with her, of like some obvious things that we need to be fixed. I think you're doing a great job as a coach, and I wouldn't recommend trying to cut her anymore or yeah. do anything like that. But think about how important it is that he present it the right way. Sure. Because yeah, sure. what if he presents it like, I can't figure out what's wrong with you. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what do you mean something's wrong with me? Yeah. Right. He Versus, hey, we looked at everything. Everything looks good. Your body's doing exactly what it's supposed to. Yeah. And here's why. And, yeah. and you know, presenting it that way versus, you know, like right. something's wrong with you. Right. Hey, look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have free guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. Adam is also on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.